Hi guys, welcome to another video tutorial. Today we're going to be looking at graphics for your compendiums. Now, they're a little bit different to the graphics for panels or your presentation layouts for panels uh, because you had two sheets that you were trying to work across and they were much bigger and so you had more room to get the information it was sort of all, all there in one visual presentation. Whereas now you're given the ability to have a book that people can read through from end to end and you, you need to get a, a whole lot more process uh, through in this layout and presentation. So uh, again there's a similar sort of theme that we follow when we're making these presentations is that we're trying to tell a story from start to finish and often the way we tell the story might be a little bit different from chronological. We might be a little bit like Quentin Tarantino. We might start with the big finish at the end and then go back to the beginning and do the process and then slowly work our way back on to the completion again so that it's a, a whole collective is often something that we'll do. So we'll start with a mesmerizing cover page, something that grabs our focus or something that relates to your other three compendiums. Remember this is all going to be put together as a set. You're going to submit it all with your shelter. Uh, but for now, let's have a look at some graphics to help you guys put together your final compendium three, which remember is the final resolved and beautiful version of all of your work you've done across the semester, including everything from studio right up into your final pavilion, and then extra work that you've done on that based on your given feedback. So we're going to look at four people's compendiums or folios that they've done. Uh, students in other universities across the planet. Uh, some really, really beautiful work in a similar sort of size and format to what you guys are going to be working at. So we've got Miranda Benoit first, and you guys can um, just Google the names of all these people. I've kept the title pages on everything for you to be able to have a look at yourself. Uh, so if you Google the name, you'll find these as well. So let's have a look. So as we saw, a beautiful cover page, it sort of summarises the project and then we go into a nice and clean, simple contents page. Note the size of fonts, they're quite small to read. Uh, when you would pick up this book uh, in your hand, obviously it would be different to when you're on screen. Um, so we want to keep fonts nice and small, about 8 or 9 point for the smallest fonts. Larger fonts like subtitles can be around anywhere between 11 to 15 point. Uh, maybe 17 at the absolute maximum of things like these big numbers. And then introducing things like color of grayscale, um, so the difference between the gray number and the black text, bringing in lines using the line tool in InDesign, making sure that you've got a solid grid line for your text, so everything lines up to one edge and then everything lines up to another edge here. Very simple, nice, lots of white space on this cover page. Uh, and easy to navigate of what is going on. And there's a nice little timeline down here to tie it all together as well. Quite a beautiful little contents page. Moving on. Now, so we come to one of the first layouts that Miranda's dealing with. Uh, so if we look on the left page, we've got white space. We're talking about where it's located, the site plan, a little bit of text talking about it. Now diagrams that bring both of the pages of the spread together and then a full bleed image on the right hand page that sort of cements everything in place. A um, really nice layout to have this sort of white then mixed with the full bleed image and then a bit of white at the bottom of that image to balance it together. Using titles to pull things together, this is a little bit big and your um, compendiums won't necessarily need titles, it depends on what sort of look you're going for. But you can get the general gist of what's happening here with the font size. There's a little bit of colour brought in, lots of white space letting the picture breathe. Again by Miranda. So this time she's got a full bleed image taking up the entire sheet and she's balancing that with a lot of white space on this side here. With only minimal text. So really letting the images do the talking. Quite a beautiful little spread. Then she counters that with a full page image, full spread image, I should say. So this really depends on how you do your binding. If you go and get perfect binding, and then you'll be able to spread your uh, book completely open, then this sometimes is nice. But then if you have a spiral bind or you have some other binding, it will make it harder to see into this image. So it really 
does depend on what your binding is going to be before you can start doing these layouts. So be careful of that. But again, nice, beautiful image. We can see line weight still. So it is still an architectural drawing. We can see where things are cut through in section and what becomes perspective rendering in context and things and while they're still abstract still gives us an idea of what's going on here. and also human scale very important these are a nice set of drawings by Miranda showing architectural qualities we're then bringing in some sky and some content so rendering in some of the qualities here and we can see what parts are in section by the blackness of the lines and what parts are in elevation so again section elevation section down here, section, section, and then elevation behind. So there should be depth and quality of your drawings. This is sort of your white clean page, which is contrasted to the more full bleed page over here. And notice sometimes uh, Miranda will have full bleed, which means all the way to the edges on her sheets, or sometimes she might have a white border. And you, you should get in the habit of testing what really works for the spread but there should be an overarching um, consistency across your entire Compendium 3. So you'll notice she has all of her text along the edges, all coming down in similar sort of spots, and then she'll either have a set of white-ish drawings on one side balanced by a much larger image taking up uh, full on the other side, or vice versa. So and that is the general work of Miranda. Same again, we can see this big image taking up a lot of colour and a lot of space on this side, versus relatively white and simple line drawings on the other side and it's a good consistent theme for her to use and for you to use also. Um, a little bit of colour just to help her with her diagrams, uh, doesn't go astray and then of course bringing in some colour back into these line architectural drawings as well and a little bit of render into the imagery. Again nice, sometimes important to leave the one page completely blank um, that's perfectly acceptable and then you can have drawings and things if there's lots of stuff going on sometimes in one page you might want to give it a little bit of breathing space on the opposite sheet and that's perfectly fine again this consistency of big image full bleed on one page contrasted or juxtaposed against this white or relatively white image on the other side little bit of text you can see everything's justified so this is called justified when the text turns into a square box. And you can do that in Indes InDesign as well using justify tool. Uh, nice, simple collection. You can see this grid line that's coming down here. Sometimes we might stretch this out to be in line with this box of the image as well. But, excuse me, that's a personal taste thing too. You can see she's brought these contour lines in here as an architectural drawing. And we can see the general layout of these spaces as a site plan, but then bringing in the satellite map with a blur over the top and then graying out this ocean has really created quite a captivating image as well as being a site plan. Absolutely beautiful. She uses a similar sort of technique here by graying out some of the context and really turning the opacity down on the texture of other contexts is bringing in there. And then she's gone to cgtextures.com got some scribble texture, some concrete texture, and painted that in on the outside edges, and then cut out all texture that's inside the architectural drawing, so it makes it really white on the inside, and really defines the space. Then she's colored in her walls that are cut through uh, in black in Photoshop, so we can really clearly and evidently see what is wall, what is inside, and what is outside context. And that's a beautiful example of drawing to the level that we need to see from you guys in your compendiums moving forward. There's a lot of architectural convention missing uh, from the panel, so we do need to see these black lines for walls that are cut, white on the inside, lighter line weights for things that aren't cut, and some context on the outside. If necessary, you might have legend. Uh, your compendium, though, is only really one space. So it depends on what you're trying to convey through the compendium. Again, Miranda's got this balance of one big lot of colour or imagery on one spread, and then on the other side, she's got relatively white and open space. A beautiful section through here showing context through the landscape. We can see this contour line, um, and again, similar in using architectural models. So, this is a hand model she would have made, and then taking a photograph 
of that model and then placing it in front of the context in Photoshop. Really, we're creating architectural drawings, but we're giving them spatial and experiential qualities that take it to a whole new level. And that's what we want to see you guys achieving. So again, we're coming through. We've got some uh, full bleed gray on this one side with some architectural drawings. Then we're bleeding this image by feathering it out to white opacity at the top here into the rest of the page and then putting some text over the top. A nice balanced spread there. Similar thing again, so we can see there's consistency here. This text is at the same height as this text here on the next page. There's a balance between what's happening there. A nice render that captures this side of the spread and then some white space with some drawings over here. Beautiful. Uh, again, this consistency of the location of the title using InDesign, so all these things are in the correct spaces. We've got our uh, titles or page numbers or things in the consistent places so we know how to define them. Sometimes it's important to shrink down your drawings and turn them into these sort of icon sizes. So if there's a process that you've gone through um, and you don't want to have pages and pages of all these SketchUp models or renders or drawings that you've done, it might be a nice idea for you to shrink them down, uh, make them into icon size and lay them all out next to each other so we can see a bit of process. Again, don't be afraid of white space by creating a spread that needs no colour. The rendering and the drawing and the quality of the images can really become what's important here in display. So a lot of you have got beautiful axonometric drawings. It would be nice to see an image like this rendered axonometric, lots of white space, beautiful. And then finishing it off with a nice white spread and a little bit of information. There's no reason why you have to fill every single one of your pages. Don't be afraid of that white space. Now we move on to Jaron Popko. Uh, some beautiful work here. Again, contents page, nice and clean. Uh, black line using lines in InDesign, keeping your line thicknesses down in InDesign as well, so they're nice and crisp. So a line thickness, you can go 0 0.2 point in InDesign is usually nice like this, changing the uh, font color to a gray for your titles and black for the stuff in between, sometimes adds a nice effect as well. So who are we dealing with here? We've got Jaron. So Jaron likes to spread as his theme likes to spread across uh, the entire layout, uh, which you'll see consistently happening, uh, balanced by some white space at the top. So before um, we had the other student who liked to have everything on one sheet and then balanced with white on the other side, this is now inverted that we have a lot of color going across two spreads and then white balancing that up to the top and starting to bleed between the two and blurring that boundary using this render coming out uh, across that line. Quite a beautiful spread. But remember, you've got to be careful about how you're going to bind this book and how you're going to bring it all together. So Jaron has got these two beautiful images here. This is an elevation of his proposed building and this is site plan. Now, these two images have no text on there. They don't have any description, page numbers or anything. The architecture and the drawings are doing all the work. And sometimes that's all you need. Two beautiful images side by side. We're using exactly the same grid lines. We can see all these lines line up. We've got the same size white border on both sides. And these uh, white gaps in here are well proportioned to what's going on in here. A beautiful, beautiful spread. So again, Jaron going across the bottom here. Uh, instead of just having that white line cutting off the top, he's added a cloud texture and faded it slowly up to the top here. Simple text, simple layout, beautiful drawing, very nice. Um, then bringing in some textured images or some imagery of precedent and it's starting to explode across the bottom here. And bringing this in using text. Um, Jaron then uses uh, this perspective imagery and starts to tie that back into the site plan. So the drawings are starting to relate together. It's a really nice way to bring these things together. Quite beautiful. The use of grid lines in Jaron's work is really important, and it's really important for you guys. So we can see 
this square is proportional to this rectangle, it's lined up together, all of these are lined up together perfectly, which is what we need to see from you guys. The text is centered on each one between these, and these circles line up between these squares beautifully. So there's a real consistency and legibility in what's happening in this panel, and then again a nice balance between what's happening in the two sheets. So Jaren again, so these images might not have been these this tall rectangular shape. Jaren has composed this layout by using InDesign to crop the edges of these things to make them fit the way he wants it to fit. And then again using small font, uh, don't let the font do the talking, don't let the text do the talking, we want the imagery to really sing. And this is a beautiful presentation that does exactly that. Uh, important to note that Jaren has doubled uh, the white space here. Clearly that is something to do with what's going on with the binding. So again, be very careful with what's going on there. So another beautiful layout set of drawings and we're using composition to pull these together. He's got a very light black line around the edges of these so that they feel the same size. And that would probably be a 0 0.1 point around the edge on a grey line, beautiful layout. Bring your hand drawing in. So there's no reason why your hand drawings have to have those awful grey lines around the edges. Uh, have a look at the video tutorial, I think it's number one or number three on this channel, that shows you how to get rid of uh, the grey scanning lines um, so that you can have a nice image that sits uh, by itself on the layout. And again, using InDesign, you can bring a line to the outside edge if you feel it's important to the layout to do that. Lots of white space, beautiful hand drawing set. Now we move on to Joseph. So Joseph has a great contents page, and he's made these little icons that sort of bring it all together so that when we're navigating through, we can see where we're at based on these icons. Very nice way to do it. Now, I would probably argue that there's too much text a little bit too much going on in these layout, but then again the architecture there's sort of a lot going on as well so it's it should be relevant to the theme of your architecture your layouts should speak a similar language um, but again we've got a consistency theme is spreading across here we've got grid lines lining up top and bottom these images here line up with the top and bottom of this the top of the text lines up with the top of this image the bottom of the text lines are roughly with the bottom of this image. Using um, page number areas with this line at the bottom to signify uh, that this zone is designated for page only, so that this above that becomes the usable space for the panel. And you can see that those repeat as we're going across, and you can do that with a master spread in InDesign. So we've got this central sort of datum space that Joseph is using throughout this work really helping him organize the space. Again going across this center space with this sort of horizontal band and then separating that with these two sides of imagery going across here, quite beautiful. We've got this horizontal band again, two different images bringing it all together. Breaking these items up individually and shrinking them down. These plans are probably highly detailed and could be shown at a larger scale, but it's important to see the levels, or for your case in the companion, it's important to see the process. So sometimes shrinking them down and laying them out together is exactly what you need. But you probably give them their own page uh, with this many plans. Sometimes against a big drawing like an axonometric might get its own sheet entirely, and then you break that next to um, some plans or some diagrams or some process sketches that lay out the process. So we get one image against lots of images and it provides a balance across the sheet using similar muted colours across the entire thing. So nothing too bright in Joseph's panels. You can see that sort of goes with the theme of his architecture and his dark concrete. Nice spread here where we've got three images making priority on one image and then we sort of carve out these two small images that fit within that one image above by cropping out the um, tops and bottoms of these images here and then balancing that with some architectural line drawings on the other side. Again, we can see architectural conventions, black line 
uh, for ground, for section, black where it's cut through in structure, black where it's cut through in plan, and small line weights where everything else is working, and some section markers. A little bit of colour brought into this thing, balanced by the grayscale, black and white of what's happening on the other sheets, sometimes adds a nice balance and contrast to the imagery. Sometimes your architectural drawings can be perfect by themselves. Uh, they don't need any other imagery in the background or on either side, uh, provided they're laid out nicely and the read as a beautiful set. Architectural uh, conventions, black lines cut through, white lines show behind, dashed lines shown above. Plan, section, beautiful. This horizontal band uh, that Joseph uses reappearing again uh, in the form of visualizations and renders and then some diagrams with numbers that correspond to where these renders are so that we know what exactly we're looking at. Which could be useful for your pavilion, you might have a diagram showing your pavilion's plan and then some uh, little view cones that show us exactly where we're looking from or what we're looking at. Uh, so Joseph's interested in zombies, so we've got some zombies in the context here. So remember we want our renders to really show and capture the essence of what the architecture is or what the concept is. We've got this full bleed image right the way to the edges on this one, balanced by lots of white space in this nice layout. And finally, we move on to Jeff Every's uh, portfolio. It's some beautiful work by Jeff. So Jeff starts off with a, a little bit of text talking about what happened across the semester for him, and then a captivating image that uh, demonstrates the concept and where it all started from. So this would be the equivalent of Jeff's touchstone. Breaking down the content contents page, uh, you won't need all this information on the side, so for you this sheet would be black against these nice little drawings um, here. Contrasting all black to all white in opposing spirits, so these are one after the other, black to white, and then these beautiful uh, fonts, so using fonts that match what it is that you're talking about. Jeff's work is quite subtle and beautiful, and so is this font, and so are the drawings making sure your line weights are kept working nice and crisp. So I'd say Joseph's, oh sorry, who are we dealing with? We're dealing with Jeff. I'd say Jeff's um, presentation, while they're beautiful, his text and font does too much of the talking. So he's probably got this set about size 12 point at the moment, where it needs to go down to probably a nine point, and it would come down to a small little box here, a small little box there, and take up much less of the graphic ownership of the spread. But a beautiful layout nonetheless. Nice image that takes over two spreads across there, full bleed to the top to really ground it, uh, and that balanced by a one third of white space at the bottom there. Beautiful, beautiful spread here where we've got these intricate line drawings going on here, intricate line drawing below, and that contrasted by the heaviness of the black on this right hand spread here. Quite a beautiful little composition. This drawing um, showing some context and in general giving us an idea of the density and things that he's dealing with, with a little bit of text going across there. So very much about this spread going across the two pages and that balance by what is probably a third white space given to the top and to the bottom. But this image obviously might not work as well if it had a white border there and a white border there. So you really need to test that whether it's worth going full bleed to the edge or bringing it in and having a bit of the border. That's at your discretion. Again, white sheet balanced by the heaviness of the dark and showing all of this process going through. So this is similar to your compendium where we want to see all the little icons of process as you've developed your pavilion and it's turned into something beautiful. And what did it start at and what did it finish at? We, we want to see that. A beautiful spread showing process. Again, coming back to this full bleed image, you can see these consistent themes across all of the work for Jeff against this one third white space. Black against what is um, a much lighter image here. And then a really heavy, heavy image after that. I bring in some architectural drawing relative to what is quite an experiential drawing. 
And then we're changing that balance of the one third across the top to now we've got a one third white uh, on the left to the two thirds drawn on the right. Coming back to that theme of one and one third there, top and bottom, and then two thirds in the middle with a little bit of text balance on the left. And then a final series of images that really summarize Jeff's semester and Jeff's work. The money shot renders that really bring it home and some process work. Coming into some final site analysis, some appendix work, some extra additional work that was done, some architectural drawings taking up the entire spread. So even though these are line drawings, we're bringing in a lot of texture here, top and bottom and internally, to show experiential qualities. But while those textures are there, we can see still see architectural dimensions. So we know that this is ground because this is all black below. We can see windows, these windows are a bit naff, but you do something a bit nicer. Um, but we can still see outlines, line weights, and these important things. We come to a final series of images. This beautiful render showing the internal space. And we can see that the, his, uh, Jeff's compendium, has now begun quite dark. So he's moved into a new territory. Uh, now these spaces at top and bottom were white before, but now to match the darkness that's going on, we've got black top and bottom. So there should be consistency in themes, but the themes must work to do what you're trying to do. So your concept should be brought out by the theme, not the other way around. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Your theme should demonstrate your concept, not your concept demonstrating your theme. So obviously your concept is more important and your theme needs to work to show that. Um, and there's some final beautiful imagery tying it all together and a final sheet by Jeff with a little bit of process showing all the work in there and then bringing it all together with that final drawing that was on the cover page as well, a little bit of text. So again, beautiful work. The key things you need to remember are providing balance in your spread. So you've got two pages to deal with and you've got a lot of versions of two pages. So you need a few things. You need an overall theme. So across your entire compendium, you're gonna have things like either a horizontal band of image or a left image or a right image or lots of line drawings on one sheet and then a two-thirds image on the right with some text underneath. What's your overall theme that's going to be consistent across the bottom? And then you need some themes within your individual two pages. So for this page we want the theme to be a balance of full bleed black on this side and full bleed white on the other side or I want a two-thirds image here, some line drawings underneath with some text over here what is it that you want to show and what is it you demonstrate? Are you bringing in color? Is it all black and white? Is it moody? Is it textured? Making sure you show your architectural conventions the entire way through. So hopefully these beautiful compendiums have helped you um, see what we're expecting from you guys. These guys are students just like you from all over the world. Um, and you can do exactly what they can do using the tools that you've developed across this semester. So we want to see lots and lots of beautiful, beautiful compendiums. Don't forget your shelter, the box, or the thing that ties it all back together. Uh, we can't wait to see them. Again, if you have any questions, chuck it up on Facebook or email, and we'll get back to them soon. Otherwise, see you in the next video tutorial. Thanks, guys. Cheers.